Hi there MotoGP fans, welcome back to the channel, you are here with The Architect and we are playing MotoGP 21 on the Xbox. MotoGP 21 has been out for a while now, we've done lots of stuff on the channel, but we need to get stuck into some championship racing now. So we've chosen the 500cc Kevin Schwantz Championship on the uh, Suzuki RGV 500. So that's the bike we've chosen and we are playing as Kevin Schwantz. We've also created a calendar, a custom calendar that's got nine rounds in it, starting at Laguna Seca, then we'll head off into Europe. We've got some of the historical tracks in there as well. We've got Sepang at the end of that and Phillip Island just to round off the championships. So nine rounds for the 500cc championship for Kevin Schwantz. So really looking forward to this. As it's our first championship, we're going to start off with eight laps, 25% race length. Uh, I think that's reasonable just to start off with. The AI difficulty, we're going to start off on 75% and see what that's like. If uh, we need to increase it, we will do. The physics of this new game is uh, a little bit more difficult than MotoGP 20. Whatever conditions are, we're going to set to variable. We're going to start in position eight, although we will be going into qualifying. A tire and fuel consumption is going to be proportionate, uh, penalty tolerant. Bike recovery, we're going to disable that because I actually don't like it very much. So I think uh, I think that's it for the race options. So we're going to set the riding aids to pro level, and I think that should actually do us. Yeah, I think that I think that's all we need to do. Don't think there's anything else there to do, is there? No. So I think we're good on pro level. So here we are at the presentation, we're our new team. It's the Lucky Strike Team Suzuki. As I said, the RGV 500, great looking bike. So stick around guys, this is going to be epic. Greetings from the USA. Today the World Championship is being held at Laguna Seca, where a new exciting Grand Prix is about to start. As you can tell from the footage we're broadcasting from the track, we're looking forward to great weather for the race. We're moving now to the starting grid where engineers and technicians are ironing out those last few details before the race starts. So here we are then guys at Laguna Seca. It's 42 degrees on track, so lovely and warm. So let's just make sure that we've got our setup loaded. Well, I've got, a I think, a reasonable setup for this. It handles a lot better than it did prior to the setup. So, and we've got some good times. We've got some good times, I think. I think we've, uh, I think we've got a good chance today of securing our first victory. So let's just have a quick look at current standings. I know we've got zero points, but this gives us a view of who's, who are we racing against? So Arbe on the Yamaha, Michael Doohan, the legend, Wayne Gardner, Eddie Lawson, Wayne Rainey. So in this year, 1993, Wayne Rainey was the direct competition for Kevin Schwantz. Uh, John Kaczynski, Alex Crivier and Roberts Jr. Kenny Roberts Jr. and Valentino Rossi. So that's uh, these are the guys who we're up against, McCoy. Jeremy McWilliams and Max Biaggi. So we've got a few Americans in this in this lineup. Which in the day, you know, there was vast American competition. But let's go and just check out our consumption. Medium tyres for this race. So we've just got one tyre left. This bike eats through tyres. We're going to need to be careful and try and manage the tyres today. We're going out on a full tank of fuel. It's uh, strange now because what it, it actually doesn't tell you anymore is how many laps of fuel or how many laps your fuel is going to last you. All it tells you now is if you if when you go down the fuel tank is that you might not have enough to complete the race. There look, on the right hand side. So we can only ever go out on a full tank of fuel because we've got no idea anymore how long the tank's going to last us. So we've got a setup, 
We've got fuel in the tank. So let's get down to the start of the race. So Wayne Gardner's on pole. Uh, medium hard seems to be what people are going out on, but I'm sticking to the mediums. It's the tyre that gets up to temperature. Hard tyre just runs cold. It's already on the starting grid. The corkscrew awaits them. Only a few seconds left and the Laguna Seca Grand Prix will begin. Yes, the dreaded corkscrew at Laguna Seca. Here we go with a manual clutch start. Lights out, go. Oh, we've got off to a good start. Oh, up again Rossi. Oh, he knocked us off track. Oh, can we get it held for the first corner? Oh, that was, that was tight. So McWilliams there on the Aprilia, I think. Oh, we have a full tank of fuel. The bike just starting to run a little bit wide. So Kenny Roberts in front of us. McWilliams in front of us, sorry. As we're right on his tail. He's looking behind us already. Kenny Roberts on the Suzuki. Let's go up the hill as we approach the corkscrew. Spike levers. I used to have a set of spike levers. Yellow and black there was. They used to come with a wasp. Can we get up the inside then of McWilliams? I think we just I think we just did there, just made it. Oh, just running to the back of Rossi. Oh, Wayne Gardner. He takes a little slide. So Valentino Rossi in front of us then after the first lap. Dwayne Gardner is leading at the moment. We seem to be managing our tyres. That's what it is at Laguna Seca. Tyre management on these two strokes as well. And I say they shred tyres. Oh, we run late. We turn late into that corner. That's opened the door for McWilliams, who's currently behind us. Oh, out on the dirt. It's quite. A slow pace, we're not motoring here at all by a long way. We've got eight laps, we'll wheelie up the hill, lining it up for the corkscrew. As Valentino Rossi just runs into the back of us. McWilliams is behind us now, he's looking to overtake us. We banked into turn 10 that time. We'll try and get Rossi down this straight if we can. We just gave him a little nudge there. So Rossi's taking the lead from Gardner. He's got to line this corner up so well. But look at these bikes, guys. They look fantastic, don't they? I remember watching these. In the pub, having a drink on a Sunday, watching the GPs, this is fantastic. So you've got to be so, so sensitive on the throttle. And you blast it straight by Gardner. What can he talk now behind Rossi? Can we get all oh, up the hill? Have we got him up the hill? Well, I think we have, you know. If we can, if we can tuck it into this corner, I think that's it. I think that's game over. This corkscrew, it's horrible. You've really got to get the bike lined up for it. Very easy to overshoot it. I've been really struggling with that. 
So keeping it tight through the rainy curve. Slips a the gear there, down into first, my mistake. If there's any viewers out there who used to watch these guys racing in 1993, let me know in the comments. Down into the Adretti pin. Ooh, we got it wrong. We got it wrong. We're spinning up the rear now. Through turn three, under the under the bridge. The Red Bull, give me wings, bridge. Round turn four. I think we're trying to pull a bit of a gap. We are pulling a gap, actually. It's hard to look anywhere else other than in front of you on this track. Because as soon as you do, you miss your line. You get all out of shape. But we seem to be three seconds in front. So 75% we've got a difficulty. So it's evident that I think we need to up it a little bit on the next race. We'll try and go up to 80%. We'll see, how, see what happens. Oh, you've got to be so careful with the throttle. The brakes are shite as well. It's very easy to overshoot it on these bikes. Let's have a look at the brake discs. I mean, that front disc... You watch it over this hill as we slide it over the hill. And we get on the brakes. Look how quickly that brake disc eats up. Oh! Nearly lost the back end then. Oh, just avoiding the dirt. You notice we're riding old school as well. And I think for this race we should drop, just to make it authentic, a filter over the top to make it more old school. So we're riding old school riding style, which isn't my preferred riding style. I always tend to run wide with this style, but we're playing old school, historical GPs, what else do you do? Oh, we overshot the corkscrew, we didn't get penalised. So Valentino Rossi still in second, but the four seconds behind. So we should bring this home nicely. If I can look at the track rather than the uh, timing up in the top left. But we should bring this home. We're going to cruise round. We're not pushing it. We're going to hang on to our tyres. Make sure that front brake this doesn't overheat. And we're going to bring it home gently. We'll pop a wheelie up there. What lap times are doing? 129. So we're not breaking any records. 125 we did in warm up. Our average over the weekend has probably been about 127. But we're up on this sector on this lap. In fact, we're up by nearly a second. I think we got that court screw right. Oh, we did. That was bob on. 1.2 seconds up on our, our previous time. 1.4 seconds up on our best time, should I say. And we're doing all right. 1.7 seconds now. That's a bob on time. That's a 126, I think. 127. As we slide it round there. 
<laughs> just managed to get it stopped. Do you guys play the historical game? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. This is fantastic. Just reminds me of riding my old NS125. I know it doesn't compare with a 500cc two-stroke. But it's just that power band. It sounds the same. And where the front wheel just constantly coming up on you. The good thing about the two strokes though, is if you're new to this game guys, grab yourself a two stroke, because this is going to really refine your skills. In terms of throttle control. You're going to get the rear end sliding, but it's to be a controlled slide. What the tyre is doing like. So miles in front guys, we definitely need to up the AI difficulty, we're 12 seconds in front. So in, in this championship we'll probably find where we need to be in terms of AI difficulty. In MotoGP 20 we'll hang around the 100% mark. I think anybody who can play on 120% is just a pure god and have got reaction skills that are far beyond mine. But it's about enjoying the game guys, that's why we've got AI difficulty, so you can compete at whatever level you are and still have a good game. Oh, got it wrong, got it wrong, got it wrong for the corkscrew. Can we get it stopped? Yep, yeah, just managed to get it stopped, but we got it all wrong. We've probably lost about nine minutes on that. Slight exaggeration, but you know where I'm coming from, guys. I love how it wheelies out of a corner. So final lap, over the line. We're wheelie over the line. While we wait for the cameras to take us to Park Ferme to meet the podium finishers, let's take a quick look at the final standings. So we did come first, McCoy comes second, Valentino Rossi comes third. Fastest lap of the race was actually Gary McCoy with a 126.5, which is just under a second faster than our best lap. Most of them was in the 129s, weren't they? 129s, 128s, 130s. So we can definitely up the AI level, I think. So Riders' Championship then. So we scored the first 25 points, so that puts us as the leader of the championship. Gary McCoy, he comes second, so he's got the 20 points. So he is second of Valentino Rossi uh, chasing us down there in third. So again, in, in this day, in this era, Wayne Rainey was the contender against Schwantz. So we'll be looking for Wayne Rainey to start to build some points and start to chase us down, I would say, in the next in the next race. Undoubtedly, it was a perfect day for him. In addition to the victory, his position also earns him 25 priceless championship points. So then guys, I think that's it for this episode. This isn't the full career mode. So we don't have any setup or anything like that or any management, team management or development to do. This is literally the championship. So this is our calendar, this is our lineup. So we are at Qatar for the next time. Then we're in Great Britain at Donington Park for another historical track. And then out to the Czech Republic in Bruno for the other historical track and then uh, we've got a few more races left then of our favourite tracks to do. 
So next time round, we'll up the AI difficulty to 80% and see how we go from there. And as we go through the season, we might even up the race laps to 35% and a few more laps. But uh, for this episode, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already for some more historical content. And I'll catch you next time. Look after yourselves. Bye-bye.